on my video, Is It Finished? James commented saying, Great insight there, Chris. Do you know where I can read and research further on the sacrificial system from the Jewish perspective? I tried Googling it, but can't find any. Plus, it leads me to a whole new rabbit hole. And yes, it does lead to a whole new rabbit hole. Now, for those of you who haven't been following along with the recent videos, now, the whole idea here is that Christians today base their entire salvation doctrine off of the so-called Old Testament sacrificial system. That is because they say that Jesus fulfilled the sacrifice, the animal sacrifices of the Old Testament. The problem is that most, if not almost all, or all Christians, don't have a clue of how the sacrificial system works. They think that, you, you know, that just anybody could bring a, an animal, uh, according to the Torah, you know, a, a spotless lamb or another animal to the temple and have it sacrificed and that the blood of that animal would atone for their sin and they would walk away free and forgiven. But that is not how it worked. We know that because many, many times throughout the scriptures and far too many times for me to reference it all here because it would take a long time. But many, many times the, the prophets said that it, sacrifice is not what God wants. For example, he said to obey is better than sacrifice. It also says, if, if sacrifice is what you desire, I would bring it, but you don't desire that. You desire a contrite heart, a humble heart. You desire, in other words, repentance. And then let's not forget how it says over and over again in the book of Proverbs that the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. That completely destroys the modern day Christian understanding of the sacrificial system because Christians understand that the wicked bring the sacrifice uh, to the temple and it's that sacrifice, it's the blood of that sacrifice that covers their sin. Therefore, you know, it's impossible, according to the Christian, modern day Christian interpretation, it's impossible for God not to accept a sacrifice because the idea is the sacrifice is to cover sin. So why would God reject the sacrifice on the basis of sin if the sacrifice is to cover the sin? In other words, the wicked people bring their sacrifice and it's that sacrifice that atones for their sins and God doesn't count their wickedness against them. But that's not not, I emphasize, not how it works. So in order for Christians to understand the doctrine of salvation, the first thing they need to understand is the doctrine of sacrifice, the sacrificial system, or as a lot of Jewish people prefer to call it, that is offerings. A lot of them don't like the word sacrifice. They want to call it offerings. And actually in the scriptures, it does refer to animal sacrifices as offerings many times. So considering the fact that Christians don't really spend a whole lot of time reading the Torah, they don't know a whole lot about the sacrificial system. So in order to find out about the sacrificial system, you should go to the experts. Go to the people who have spent a lot of time in the Torah. So we should go to people who actually know a little bit more about the sacrificial system than your everyday average Christian does. And this is where we need to turn to the Jewish people. Now the problem is, as James pointed out, that there is not a whole lot of information out there, even from the Jewish people, about the sacrificial system. So even most Jews don't know a whole lot about the sacrificial system because they don't see a need for it. They don't see a need for that kind of education or that kind of knowledge because they don't practice it anymore because there is no temple standing for them to offer those sacrifices. So this information is quite rare, even in the Jewish world. However, there are some sources such as Rabbi Gordon from Chabad or Rabbi Yehezkel Atalki who has taught on these subjects, you know, at least touched on these subjects. But unfortunately, like Rabbi Atelki did pull down all of his videos from uh, the internet. So that's very unfortunate. However, there are other sources such as Aish.com. And I want to direct your attention to Aish.com. Now, this is an article on Aish.com. Aish.com is a Jewish website. And the title of this article is Understanding the Sacrifices. 
Now here's a, a subsection, how it worked. And it says here, imagine the scene during one of the holidays, Pesach, Shavuot, or Sukkot. Everyone has come up to Jerusalem, and Jake is no exception. Jake takes his lamb up to the temple. This is not just any lamb. He has kept it for at least three days to make sure there is no blemish. The big day arrives when he takes little Fluffy up to the temple. Now a couple paragraphs down here, it goes on to explain here, Jake brings little Fluffy forward. He puts his hands on the lamb's head and rests his weight on it. In one sense, he connects with the animal. So it was like an extension of himself. Now here is a key word here, connects. So the whole idea here is for the person who's bringing the animal sacrifice to connect with that animal so that it was like an extension of himself. Now, when the Apostle Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, it's by no coincidence. He just didn't pull that out of a hat. The idea of connecting with the sacrifice or identifying with that sacrifice as Paul did with Jesus, that comes directly from the Judaic understanding of how sacrifices worked, how the sacrificial system worked. Paul just didn't make that up, okay? To connect with the sacrifice, to connect with that offering in such a way that it's an extension of yourself or you identify with it, Paul knows what he's talking about there, okay? Remember, he was taught at the feet of Gamaliel, which is one of the great Jewish leaders in Judaism. He knows all this stuff. So let's look at this article again. In one sense, he connects with the animal so that it was like an extension of himself. To actually see a lamb killed right in front of you is an unsettling thing. A moment ago, it was little fluffy, and now, dead meat. This shakes Jacob as it would anybody. Life and death are staring him in the face. Running through his mind is the startling thought, this could be me. This animal is just like me, with a heart, hair, gallbladder. What is the difference? A soul? Then some of the blood is taken and put on the altar. On one level, the blood represents the animal nature of a human being. I'll say it again. The blood represents the animal nature of a human being. This term animal nature is synonymous with the term sinful nature in the New Testament. And this is what Rabbi Gordon taught as well from Chabad, that when you bring an animal as an offering, that animal represents the animalistic part of you. That animal represents the sinful part of you, the animalistic nature, the animal nature, or the sinful nature. Then it says here, after that, certain fats are burned on the altar. This represents desire, which should be elevated. So there's a lot to unpack here. We got the blood that represents the animalistic nature or the sinful nature. Then we got the fat that represents the desire, or in other words, passion for sin, which should be elevated. So when the fat is burned on the altar, just as that fat is elevated, so to speak, in fire and smoke, so your passion should be elevated from that, from the sinful nature to that of the heavenly nature. Remember Paul said, let your affections be on things above. And I'll say it again, the blood represents the sinful nature, the flesh, and the fat represents the passions, the desires for sin. It's no coincidence that Paul said in Galatians chapter 5, verse 24, that those who belong to Christ Jesus have, have, you see that? Past tense, have crucified the flesh. There we go. There's the animal nature with its passions and desires. So Paul says, by faith in Christ, you have crucified your sinful nature with its desires, with its passions. That corresponds directly with what H.com says, how the sacrificial system worked. The blood represents the flesh or the sinful nature, and the fat represents the passions for sin. But you see, a lot of people didn't make that connection when they brought their offerings, when they brought that lamb as an offering to the temple. They just couldn't make that connection or they didn't make that connection. And that's why God said many times throughout the scriptures, I don't even want your offering. I don't want your animal sacrifices. They're, they're an abomination to me. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I want obedience, not sacrifice. Your offerings, your sacrifices are, are a stench to me because you did not make that connection. 
You did not repent. You did not change. And that is what it's all about. The whole idea of animal sacrifices or offerings is to bring about change, to be a catalyst unto repentance, to be a catalyst unto change, to be a catalyst to put away that sinful nature, to crucify that sinful nature, to elevate those passions so that you direct your passion no more towards sin, but to the heavenly realms. Instead of being passionate for sin, you're now passionate for the Word of God. You're passionate to love God. You're passionate to obey God. That's what it's all about.